this is Billy Jensen, and this is Crime Watch Debrief, where we dig deeper into the stories that we've just watched. And I'm sitting here with Kelly McClear, and Kelly worked on the story of Faith Hedgepeth, which was the heartbreaking story of a beautiful college co-ed who was murdered in her off-campus apartment near the University of North Carolina. The thing that sticks out for me is the information that they released just last year of this note that was found at the scene. Yes. The note said, I'm not stupid bitch jealous. First of all, it was left on the bed and there where Faith was found. There was no blood whatsoever on the note and it was written on a like a white fast food bag or a shopping bag, just a plain old white paper bag. It can be taken multiple different ways. I'm not stupid, bitch, jealous, question mark, exclamation point. Was it a funny note left days before or was it an angry note left at the crime scene? We were able to uncover a voicemail, which seems like it has so much more information than that, just that simple note. Well, uh, in doing the research and putting the stories together, I talked with one of Faith's very close friends. And in our conversations, it came up that she had a voicemail that Faith had left for her the early morning hours that Faith was killed. So, you know, she had seen that Faith had called a couple of times, didn't answer, went back to sleep. She actually deleted the voicemail thinking, oh, it's a pocket dial, she's in the club, who cares? Next morning, she finds out her best friend has been killed. So she immediately calls the cell phone company and gets them to restore the voicemail. She knew something wasn't right with the voicemail, so she turned it over to the Chapel Hill Police Department, where it's been sitting. You were able to track down an investigator mm -hmm. who is an expert in pocket dials. He, yes, he is an expert in pocket dials. Mr. West is actually a beta tester for a lot of audio software programs for FBI and for investigative purposes and such. He called me and said, are you kidding me with this? I said, Mr. West, what do you, what do you mean? Uh, I'm was, thinking he's going to say it's too bad. It's too he, distorted. It's too it's distorted too, yeah. to do anything. And I said, you know, what are you referring to? And he goes, well, I'm hearing a woman in distress. I'm hearing another female's voice. I'm hearing what sounds like at least two other men. I hear a struggle. I hear yelling. So once we confirmed it was Faith's voice on the voicemail, Arlo then did a little work on the first minute. And it was then, after a minute, he contacted the Chapel Hill Police Department because he wanted to try to get samples of people's voices from those questioning, from those recorded police questioning. And they said, okay, we'll get back to you. And they never got back to him. They never got back to him? No. Once he's been able mm -hmm. to peel this back, he hears the name uh, Eric that is on the tape, yes. on the voicemail. He was, he did have a history of abuse. Yes. He had a history with Faith herself. Yes. Eric's not a fan of mine, shall we say. You know, we definitely had some Facebook messaging exchange and he was very close to agreeing to do an interview with us. He, I guess, had come across uh, the, the online story about Faith that you had written and said that we were just like the others. F you. But anyway, we were in Chapel Hill. Matt and I decided we were gonna go by his house yeah. and go see if he would talk to us face to face. So we knocked on the door, his mother came to the door. Uh, you know, you see the exchange, Matt was very polite. You know, she asked us to leave the property and so we did. So we drive a few miles down the road and park at, you know, a grocery store parking lot just to regroup with the crew and see what our next spot uh, plan of action was. And when I notice uh, out of the corner of my eye, I see a vehicle slowly creeping behind us and it's Mr. Eric Takoya Jones in the driver's side. He had followed us from his house. So I very promptly <laughs> asked that everybody get in their cars and we left immediately. You present the cleaned up version of the voicemail to the family. Yes. How hard was that? How difficult was that to be with the family and have them listening to what very well might be their daughter being murdered? I'm not gonna lie, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Just knowing what was potentially on that voicemail, what Arlo was able to uncover, it was heartbreaking. I, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like having to listen to your daughter scream and say, get off of me. To hear the words, I think she's dying, do it anyhow. I, I mean, personally, I was shaking. Like, j just not knowing how this family is going to react. Right. And they took it very well. You know, it just really confirmed what they suspected all along, that there were multiple people involved in Faith's murder. Being able to open this up, and that's the great thing about 
what we do mm -hmm. as the fourth estate yes. <laughs> is that we're the last resort. Yes. And when a family is stonewalled potentially by an investigation, mm -hmm. you know, if this didn't go on the air, they might not have been looking closer at this voicemail. They sort of dismissed it and yes. said the voicemail doesn't match up with our timeline. But because this went on the air, they are on record now. Chapel Hill Police Department is on record saying they're going to look closer at this voicemail. You want to do right by the family. And it's not something I will ever let go until her murder is solved. Um, I will always think about it. I always try to find new ways of helping this family out. But I got to tell you, we really lit a fire underneath the Chapel Hill Police Department. That feeling that, all right, we've done everything that we could at this point. Mm -hmm. It's the job of the police exactly. to take it Exactly, absolutely. Here. It is. Yeah. It's, and it's... You know, you, you become such a part of their lives. You know, I consider the Hedgepath family friends of mine now. You know, when you're talking to them daily, hourly, text messages, emails, phone calls, back and forth, and then all of a sudden it stops. And it's sad, you know? It's like having to say goodbye. But um, I know it won't be the end of it until it is solved. Yeah. Thanks for watching Crime Watch Debrief. I'm Billy Jensen with Kelly McClear. And remember, we are watching.